Bear in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that every time you violate or propose to violate the free speech of someone else, you in potentia, you're making a rod for your own back because the other question raised by Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes is simply this, who's going to decide? To whom do you award the right to decide which speech is harmful or who is the harmful speaker? Or to determine in advance what are the harmful consequences going to be that we know enough about in advance to prevent? To whom would you give this job? To whom are you going to award the task of being the censor? Isn't it a famous old story that the man who has to read all the pornography in order to decide what's fit to be passed and what is fit not to be is the man most likely to become debauched. Did you hear any speaker uh, in the opposition to this motion, eloquent as one of them was, um, do, who, to whom you would delegate the task of deciding for you what you could read? Who to whom you would give the job of deciding for you, relieve you of the responsibility of hearing what you might have to hear? Do you know anyone? Hands up. Do you know anyone to whom you'd give this job? Does anyone have a nominee? You mean there's no one in Canada good enough to decide what I can read or hear? I had no idea. But there's a law that says there must be such a person, or there's a subsection of some piddling law that says it. Well, the hell with that law then. It's inviting you to be liars and hypocrites and to deny what you evidently know already. About the censorious instinct, we basically know all that we need to know. and We've known it for a long time. Christopher, go ahead. When, uh, Dr. when Dr. Samuel Johnson had finished his great um, lexicography, the first real English dictionary, he was visited by various delegations of people to congratulate him, including a delegation of London's respectable womanhood who came to his parlour in Fleet Street and said, Doctor, we congratulate you on your decision to exclude all indecent words from your dictionary. And he said, ladies, I congratulate you on your persistence in looking them up. <laughs> um, I think... <clears throat> I think anyone who understands that story, which I'm pleased to see everybody obviously does, will see through the sinister piffle we were just uh, treated to just now. If people are determined to be offended, if they will climb up on the ladder, balancing it precariously on their own toilet system, to be upset by what they see through the neighbor's bathroom window, there's nothing you can do about that. If someone tells me that I've hurt their feelings, I, I, I say, well, I'm still waiting to hear what your point is. Right. I'm very depressed how in this country you can be told that's offensive, as if those two, st those two words constitute an argument or a comment. Not to me, they don't. And I'm not running for anything, so I don't have to pretend to like people when I don't. And the other word is offence. It's now very common to hear people say, I'm rather offended by that, as if that gives them certain rights. It's actually nothing more. It's simply a whine. It's no more than a whine. I find that saying, so offensive. I find that offensive. Oh, That's, right. it, it has no meaning. It has no purpose. It has no reason to be respected as a phrase, I am offended by that. Well, so fucking what? I mean, if I have the right to say anything, you certainly have the right to be offended. If I can say anything I want, you can say, Penn shouldn't have said that. And you can say, Penn shouldn't have said that, and none of us should talk to him anymore. And Penn shouldn't have said that, we should, he shouldn't have a job. And Penn shouldn't have said that, and he's not funny. Penn shouldn't have said that. We're going to put a pickets out in front of the club, and he shouldn't be able to go to that club. All that is within your rights, and very clearly within your rights. But just like uh, every individual has to make a decision on just because they can say something doesn't mean they have to say it, individuals have to make the decision that just because you might feel offended by something doesn't mean you have to announce you're offended. We're all offended all the time and we don't have a fucking right not to be offended a free country is a marketplace of ideas and college should be more free not less no, outrage is bs it's stupid it's pe people that think that they have a right to be protected from being offended is mm -hmm. what's wrong in in this century is that people think that somehow they don't have a, they 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 have that there that there should be people protecting them from being uncomfortable from from there being stuff out there they don't like to hear that I I think that's the main thing that's wrong right now is people that, that think well I don't like that so it shouldn't e exist no yeah you should you should have to feel uncomfortable sometimes the problem is I mean, too everybody thinks I don't know <clears throat> Americans think that they that they're owed 
a perfect day. There's this, yeah, there's this uh, entitlement thing that goes yes. on in this country where they confuse America and freedom That's exactly. with with uh, the right to not be annoyed, offended. Right. Uh, and that's not it at all. I think it goes across the board. And it's not just Americans. In Europe, we always say it's yeah. Americans. They're, they're trying to ban ads that are, that are somehow gender... Uh, uh, stereotypical gender ads yeah. that are sexy or offensive because the Europeans are a bunch of watered down douches. It's not yeah. just Americans. No, you're it's right. England. Yeah, they coddle Muslims in England. They're terrified of offending Muslims in England. Yeah. Yep. That's like black and white here. Mm -hmm. So the whole world is just filled with a bunch of sissies who are No, it's absolutely true. Nevertheless, it's quite true that many people do feel very strongly about their faith and very offended if you insult it. Uh, we've come to expect never to be offended. What you say is offensive to me. <laughs> I'm offended by some things. I'm offended by chewing gum. I'm offended by backwards pointing baseball hats. <laughs> but I don't try to get a version of the blasphemy law passed to prevent people chewing gum or reversing their cap. So what if I'm offended? So what if my feelings are hurt? Does that give me the right to prevent others from expressing their opinions? In this dispute, what the offensive person has actually said is seldom very important. It is what the offended person believes him to have said that counts. And this is the process into which we are rapidly entering as a society. We are moving towards a strange dictatorship of rage, where any approved group or any approved person's Fury is sufficient to trigger calls for the denial of platforms, for the ostracism of one kind or, or, or another of that person, in effect for the silencing of those people and the suppression of their opinions. This is a sinister development. The very idea that it should be possible to claim to have been personally offended by the expression of opinion is a dangerous absurdity and a danger to a free society. We now have many categories of people, and pink or grey, male, middle class heterosexuals are not among them, who are entitled by some system which is never quite clear to be offended or insulted by any disagreement with their views and to follow their offence and insult by suppressing that view and by trying with a great deal of self-righteousness to prevent it from being expressed by, for instance, as happened in this city quite recently, preventing the holding of meetings at which opinions with which they disagree were going to be expressed by people of whom they disapproved. The person who is disapproved of is then classified with, an, with a pathology, so he is described as suffering from some sort of phobia. He is then cast into the outer darkness amid wailing and gnashing of teeth, never again permitted to speak in this, in this or that place, and driven increasingly out of public life. This is straightforwardly censorship. In the hands of an unpleasant, semi-literate and, and ill-educated mob, it is very, very disagreeable to watch. In the hands of supposedly educated students, it is, it is alarming and absurd. But in the hands of the state, which increasingly also resorts to the idea that that the, the beliefs described by itself as extremism or indeed as glorifying terrorism can be the subject of legal sanction, it is terrifying. And it is that terror that I wish to draw to your attention. This idea that any opinion legitimately expressed can be dismissed on the grounds that it is an offence or an insult to an individual is the foundation of a new and terrifying censorship. And censorship is the foundation of tyranny. And if you don't want censorship or tyranny, then you must support this motion. Thank you very much.